I will now like to introduce to you now our Chancellor of Trinity College Dublin. You all know who it is, former UN High Commissioner of Human Rights, and of course the former President of Ireland. Welcome, Mary Robinson. Thank you very much and good morning everyone. As Chancellor of Dublin University Trinity College, I'm most delighted and honoured to welcome such a distinguished gathering to Mark Schrodinger's at 75, What is Life? The Future of Biology. We don't do things by half measures when we welcome people from outside Ireland to Ireland and to Dublin. We say, Cade Mila Falcha, 100,000 welcomes. And that is, uh, the welcome we want to extend. I'm also delighted to know that in this audience there are students and there are school uh, pupils. Um, a special welcome to them, as, as Luke has said. Also, I was delighted waiting and seeing what was on the screen to see quite a lot of uh, publicity for the Women on Walls exhibition. I actually attended the opening in the United Nations of the Women on Walls exhibition with great support from our uh, ambassador to the UN, Geraldine Byrne Nason. She was determined um, that this exhibition would be uh, uh, central to marking the uh, International Women's Day and the Commission on the Status of the Women because she was chair at the time of the commission. There are four women who are highlighted in the Women on Walls exhibition and two of them are in the front row here, um, Emma Teeling and Lydia Lynch, and they will be two of the speakers um, to make up for the 50th anniversary when they're, imagine having a conference with all men and they didn't even think it was unusual. Thank goodness we've made progress. Um, scientific discoveries drive economic progress and human development, and that's what makes this meeting on the future of biology such an outstanding event. Today we mark the anniversary of Erwin Schrodinger's um, historic lecture lectures, What is Life, which were given, as we've heard, at Trinity College, and which inspired generations of world-renowned scientists, such as Francis Crick and Jim Watson, whom I was sitting beside in the front row. I'm glad that this conference has received significant advanced publicity, including an interesting account in the Irish Times of how Eamon de Valera as Taoiseach persuaded uh, Schrodinger to come to Dublin and um, of his colourful personal life. Schrodinger's at, at 75 inspires us to look into the future of various aspects of biology to the eyes of the distinguished speakers here today who've already made a significant impact on science and technology. And it's a particular pleasure to welcome uh, six Nobel laureates and so many other renowned experts. Every one of us has a stake in finding out more about how we age, about the meaning of our consciousness, and indeed, what is the origin of life and what lies ahead? Science drives progress, and it's commendable that you have the well-being of humankind at the forefront of your research agenda. My own focus at the moment is on climate justice, and we made it clear from the establishment of my foundation that climate justice has to stay true to the science. Sadly, there are still those who would try to deny or distort the science of climate change, thereby putting vulnerable countries and communities at even greater risk from climate shocks. Trinity College and Dublin were delighted to mark last Thursday the 30th anniversary of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, and to welcome so many distinguished authors and scientists here for their important work, and I know there are a number of them here in the audience today. The forthcoming report on the implications of a world staying at or below 1.5 degrees Celsius of warming above pre-industrial standards will be crucial to promoting global solidarity and climate justice in our world today. As the chair of the IPCC, Dr. Hussing Lee, said last Thursday, after 30 years, it's encouraging to confirm that scientific integrity and policy relevance are hallmarks of the work of the IPCC and that solid science and forward-looking policy can work together for a more sustainable and prosperous world. It's such a noble thing to use science to help improve the lives of people around the world, ensuring that ethical principles take precedence. 
I encourage scientists not just to do the research and modeling, but to communicate better with the broader public and particularly with young people. Scientists need to improve their communications skills. Don't you agree? Scientists need to improve their communications skills. And I'm delighted, therefore, to be associated with this extraordinary meeting and to wish you very constructive discussions. I look forward to learning more about the exciting discoveries that lie ahead, and I hope that Luke's dream will come true, that we will see from this great gathering some new impetus, some new discovery, some new thought about what is life and the future of biology. Thank you very much, and I wish you all very well. Thank you.